everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Now you're probably wondering why am I doing two episodes today? Well that's because A I missed some of the last episode's stuff, which is the level BP for the grass battle scene. The other thing I wanted to show off was how to roll the encounter um, before uh, we calculate what we get and all that sort of stuff. I also fixed the stuff with the shiny and this basically kind of finishes off the main part of our encounter in a nice little bundle. So let's get stuck in. Now let's finish off the blueprint. So what I've done here is all I've done, you can get rid of the print uh, strings, it's not necessary anymore. I can actually delete those out because we know it's working. Um, we roll our shiny and I set a boolean for is shiny. Everything else is pretty much the same. Um, all I've done is I've put that set shiny uh, in here. I pull out the creature info and that goes straight into our roll base stats, which I still obviously have to do, but for now, um, I'm just happy I'm getting the shinies working. And that basically just pings into here. I'm also just double checking that is shiny is definitely getting set and it won't unset. It's probably unnecessary, but I'm just doing it for my own peace of mind. We then set our creature info. And that is, the target of that is this, okay? So I'm pulling off of here and I'm setting this creature sat, creature info and I'm plugging it into our save information instead of going straight off of our role based stats. So everything else is pretty much the same. Now, this is code from Mr. Meerkat. Um, we're basically setting a timer by event and then we're promoting that to a variable. When we leave the box, we just pause that timer by handle. So that's, and I've just set it to a time of 0 0.5 seconds. And then we're rolling for our encounter, which is a custom event that is plugged directly into that timer by event. We then get a branch, and what we're checking is, uh, we make a little literal float of 0 0.1. We add that together with a new integer we've set up, which is times roll failed and we times that by 0 0.05 and we add that to this little flow. And then we get a random ball with weight. If that comes back true, we get uh, times, we'll set our times roll fail back to zero. We pause the time of our handle and then we run our codes, which is our set encounter array. But that obviously is a different, it should be a totally different name now, but that's what is driving this, okay? So once we pause the time of handle, we set that. And if we fail, we just increase uh, we do a increment, uh, which is setting our times roll failed. We increment that times roll failed by one, and then it reruns. It'll basically wait half a second more, then it'll rerun this function again uh, with the new variable set, and it'll just check again. That's how we run the timer event, so it won't always be set to true on one second. It might take four seconds, but eventually we'll get an encounter just by standing in the in the bounds and then it will run this code that we've just been through again if you have any questions please either join the discord and talk to us or um leave a comment in the youtube uh, in this video once that's done um everything is set up now the shiny mesh code was was in here this moved um and now i'm going to show you what i should have showed you last episode which was our level bp information Okay, so with all this set up, um, exactly how it was before, so it's setting our player position, it's um, also casting and changing all the camera information as well. But what we also want to do is we want to, on a sequence, that zero is coming off to load the game slot, and again, if you remember last episode, mine's called encounter slot with an in user index of one, 101. We then cast the ring mon save game so we can get all of our variables. <clears throat> we then get the creature infra from those variables and we're gonna break that slot. We're gonna get, we're then going to, um, so I've created a spawn target, I did say I'd show you that. So let's quickly show you that. It's in the map, I believe. Uh, there it is, spawn target. And this is literally, I may have shown you this last episode, but it's just, um, it's just a billboard with an arrow on it. Um, we get all the actors of that class. Now, there will only ever be one, maybe two, but usually it's just the one. Um, and then we get zero. 
which is the first ever slot from our array. So we get the array, it's always going to be zero. And we get that actor location, and we plug that into the spawn transfer of our spawn actor. We then get the creature information. We get the ringmon class, and we spawn that ringmon class. Okay? Um, and then we are um, setting... So this is where I was going wrong with all the information actually being passed through into the actual creature. So the creature we spawn will always be a blank slate taken from um, our content draw. So it's going to always take this. For example, if it's Oster, it will always check, uh, take Oster. But this is information I've set manually. It's not this information here. It's never going to update that. Even if I set that creature, if I get all the actors and I set that creature info, it'll never take that, right? So what's going to happen is um, what we need is our spawn actor. We need to get that new information, that new creature's information. So it's a whole new creature. It's not in the world. It's completely spawned afresh. So it takes all the defaults that I've set manually. And what I'm doing is I'm updating that creature information from our save file information and updating everything. But we've already spawned our actor. So it's never going to spawn the new shiny information. What it's going to do, what I need to do is I need to update that mesh in here, like so. Uh, and that's how I update it. So I'm just setting the materials of that actor, getting its mesh information from that new spawn, and I'm getting that creature information we've just set, and I'm updating it now. Going forward, when we save this creature's information into a slot in our party or in our boxes, it will hold all that information. So when we spawn it in the future, if we catch it and spawn it in the future, it won't need to update its set material from here because it will all be updated so we can set that material via the creature VP. So I will set up a new um, material set in here, but that will work on spawning because it will save and update that information. So that will be what we look at next is our party information. So at this point now, you should have a working um, encounter. So it'll roll the encounter, it'll now, one thing to note with this setup that I've done, you with it with the root information, so whatever Pokemon you want to encounter, you will have to have a, um, um, you'll have to have that creature in the world to ensure it can find what creatures you're talking about. That's the sad way, that's the kind of way I've set it up so that I can set that creature's information and get a, a, a copy of that and post it into here. It's not the most ideal way of doing it. Um, I'm pretty sure the old Pokemons used to run a bit like that and I'm sure they're, they're totally different now, but sadly I'm not a pro. <laughs> so if I load up the map quickly um, and we go back to the, the persistent level we've got set up, um, why are you doing that? No, we don't want to do that. What the? Let's reload that up. Oh, um, I'm guessing something hasn't updated. That's fine. Save selected. It's, yeah, that's fine. Something's probably not saved in the, in the level. So it's auto save something, but that's fine. So as you can see, I've got my three starters here. They'll be under the map, basically. So you don't only have the Pokemon you want to encounter on those routes under the map so that it can find out what you're talking about, basically. Um, again, I'm sure there's probably a significantly better way of dealing with that. But for now, it's fine. Everything's working. I'm okay with just putting like a few Pokemon under the map that I want to spawn in. And as you can see, it set that up as a shiny. Let's trigger that again and see what we can get. It might take a few seconds to, there we go. And it's, it, now this could be Tail, or, uh, Tail Flame or Oster, they, they share the same shiny colors. Um, so let's see if we can roll for a blue, or, or just a normal, non-shiny, it's giving me the same information, interesting. So, I want to print, um, what am I doing? I want to print, um, I just want to know, wait, let's just try again, see what happens. 
it could just be that it could be just rolling the shiny. The shiny odds are incredibly high. There you go. Yeah, it is working. Her, her badge is normal. There you go. It's because the shiny odds are so high. It's a fifty percent chance. And again, it could have been tail low. It could have been tail flame. Sorry, shiny or uh, Oster shiny. I I couldn't tell the difference. But you know, it, it is working. It's fine. We are getting non shinies as well. Um, so great. Yeah, there you go. Um, the, the other thing as well is her badger shiny is the same as, um, yeah, there we go, it is working. So, yeah, so with everything set up as is, it is working. Um, and it's working actually pretty well. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I can push through random shiny variables and set those up to those creatures. Uh, and now what I need to do is, um, from here on, all we need to work on now, I don't know why my, I need to set up a new um, level because it's really broken. Um, what we need to work on from here now is getting um, a party started. So that's where we're at. So encounters for me is done. Um, I, I just need to work on battle stats, but I need to work on that in general anyway um, and rolling those. And So going forward, um, we just need to get a party started now and then we can work on menus and then we can work on attacks. And once that's done, um, we can replicate a lot of the information across the board uh, and get ourselves a little world set up and lots of different ring on, etc. And we're getting there. We're getting there. But this is the final episode now on setting up your encounters. Um, I will cover battle stats in a, in a separate level because we have to do a lot of maths to work out not only our parties, but our creatures, uh, our encounters and our enemies and that's all kind of I'm hoping to get all that done kind of under one um, set of information but bear with me we're getting there <laughs> at least the encounters are set up now and all the shiny information is being pushed through and the level and all that kind of good stuff so thank you so much guys for watching um, as I said I, I'm throwing out two episodes here just to make sure you guys are all happy with everything that's going on and you guys are following along and it's working for you guys if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or join the Discord and ask us in there. Um, there's a few of us that's kind of all talking about this all at one time. So um, pick our brains, of course, and I'm sure we'll all be uh, happy to help. And um, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already. You can always change your mind down the line. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.